Yeah. Apollo Houston, I got two messages for you. Moscow is go for docking. Houston is go for docking. It's up to you guys. Have fun. All righty, sounds good. Palomino, Mila, Alexei. Soyuz docking system is ready. Good job. Let's say that. Let's say that. I am approaching Soyuz. Tom, please don't forget about your engine. <laughs> Less than five meters distance. Three metro. Three meters. Okay, metro. One meter. Contact. Capture. Capture. Tell Professor Bushuyev it was a soft docking. Well done, Tom. It was a good show. They are looking forward now to shaking hands with you on, in both the youth. All right. On a show. Hawk Prevay, you look free. Okay, the camera. Ah! Ah, just the Got it? It'll, it'll stay open. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Lexi. Mr. Volek? <laughs> uh, okay, turn on the camera. Hit the remote. Okay. Here. Camera. Uh, Glad to see you. Uh, here. Passage, uh, Alexi. Ocean Rod. Ocean Rod. It's a Russian end. Sovietsky Soyuz. Sidionic Stata. New possibilities are opening up for fruitful development of scientific cooperation between countries and the peoples in the interests of, of peace and progress of all humanity. I wish you successful completion of the planned program and a safe return to Earth. Leonid Brezhnev. Good afternoon, I'm on the line, sir. Gentlemen, let me call to express my very great admiration for your hard work, your total dedication in preparing for this first joint flight. It's taken us many years to open this door to useful cooperation in space between our two countries. And I'm confident that the day is not far off when space missions made possible by this first joint effort will be more or less commonplace. The most uh, vivid impression of my life has to do with the fact that not only was I in a space vehicle, but I found myself to be surrounded with the stars. Stars were on the right-hand side and uh, the Earth was on the left-hand side. And it was just an enormous, unbelievable silence, which is something that comes back to me as a reminiscence of my first flight. Uh, as you moved outside of the uh, Vaskhod spacecraft, uh, Pavel Belyaev, your crewmate, uh, was watching very carefully. You wrote in an article for Air and Space magazine uh, several years ago, that you felt like a seagull with its wings outstretched, soaring high above the Earth. What, what was that experience like? It was a very short spacewalk, but you had great recollections of it. Well, this feeling is just the uh, perception of space, the perception of environment. And what I saw and I saw just half of the world because we were 500 kilometers above the Earth. And uh, nobody, even up, up until now, nobody is flying that high. So I saw a radius of half of the planet of Earth and the ability to see the whole Earth as a globe, pretty much, is something that was extremely attractive. And I could easily recognize the Black Sea, the Crimea, Romania, Bulgaria, Italy, looking up a little bit, Baltic Sea, 
and it was all within minutes, if not seconds. But the most uh, impression had to do with the silence. And I, I heard how my heart was pounding. I could hear myself breathe. And I, I remembered Arthur Clarke and Stanley Kubrick, who, while doing this space odyssey, they worked a lot on the, uh, a lot on the soundtrack. And this, the, the way the uh, crew members used to breathe during this uh, movie was very impressive. And uh, the uh, images that I have that show a person with his hands widespread, which is a symbolic representation of a seagull, although to me it's uh, more like a paratrooper in a free flight. This uh, analogy is closer to me personally, but once again, silence. These stars were very bright, there was a lot of them, and what, it was interesting that they were everywhere. They were above and they were beneath, and on the ground we can only see stars up in the sky. In space, they are everywhere, and it depends on how good a vision of an individual is, but uh, in space we see much smaller stars.